All right, guys, well, today you have questions, I have answers. All right guys, well today I thought I'd try something a little bit new and actually do like a Q&A for you guys because a lot of you guys have been asking me some questions on social media, whether it be Facebook and some of the Boss 302 forms, uh, whether it be directly on the YouTube channel uh, or on Instagram. So I decided, you know what, let's do a video. Let's kind of condense some of the most commonly asked questions into one video and hopefully I can answer some for you guys. Maybe even uh, a little too shy to ask the questions directly or you just weren't sure. Well now I'm gonna try and uh, dispel everything and get these things solved for you guys. All right, so let's get started all right so the number one thing I get asked a lot about and it partially well it's actually completely to my fault is the MT82 transmission uh, two videos ago I did that video where I finally broke the transmission itself fifth gear synchros are done uh, needs to be uh, repaired so that got a lot of people asking some questions and interestingly enough I discovered that a few guys are actually going through the exact same thing as I am right now so I thought okay let's kind of go over everything because a lot of you guys are asking what parts I put on the car and uh, you know hey you should do this you should upgrade that part this really helped mine so I thought you know what let's just recap it all and go over exactly what I've done to the transmission up until this point so currently right now guys when I bought the car it came with the MGW first generation shifter on it uh, great shifter it's very much like a rifle bolt shifts great uh, feels good I was really happy with it but I was still experiencing like what many of you guys have seen or are experiencing yourselves that high rpm third gear lockout really notchy getting into first and second all of those things I experienced them even with this shifter in the car so it got me thinking what do I need to do next to start solving this issue? So I started working my way down the list like some of you guys have probably already seen. Uh, we changed out the transmission fluid, made it a little bit better, a little bit smoother, especially when it was cold, that helped. Changed out the hydraulic line, went with a McLeod stainless steel line, that helped again, but you know, got made the pedal a little bit firmer, didn't feel so vague, that was great. But the next big thing that I did was the Blowfish Racing uh, shifter support bracket. Definitely helped. Uh, but it had some negative drawbacks. One of the biggest ones being excessive vibration in the shifter now, uh, to the point where that first generation MGW now rattles at higher RPM. Very distracting, really annoying, uh, but it still didn't fully solve the problem with that third gear lockout. Now, it might have helped some of you guys out there because it just depends on what your transmission's like. Uh, these transmissions, from what I'm gathering, have a lot of uh, variability within them. Some are not so bad, some are really horrible, and some guys have had them rebuilt multiple times. So it just depends on your car, but so far, that combination with the fluid, the hydraulic line, the shifter, and the blowfish racing bracket didn't really help my car so what was left well we all know that Ben Calmer does those transmission rebuilds definitely on my mind and a lot of guys say hey you do the clutch you know if you're getting the transmission rebuilt which I am uh, I'm gonna go with the clutch now so we've actually gone ahead and ordered and I have it right now the spec stage one clutch the lightened steel flywheel and uh, McLeod uh, throwout bearing uh, sorry yeah the throwout bearing and then the pilot bearing I've got as well from Ford Racing so kind of got all those parts they're ready to go in the car when the guys rebuild the transmission so that's hopefully gonna solve it uh, I'm hopefully trying to get a little bit more information about that technical service bulletin that's out for these transmissions. I don't know really what it is. We're trying to figure it out, but Ford's quietly kind of said, hey, there's something wrong here, and we're gonna have new parts if a customer comes in and says they've had a failed transmission or they're complaining about certain issues, lockout, notchiness. So I'm gonna get that information, but the car's not going in for another week, week and a half, uh, and I'm gonna be away on a business trip, so they're gonna do the repair while I'm away, and I'll do another video about that and get all that updated for you guys. So that kind of covers off that. Let's move on to the next question. All right, one I got here was uh, David. Uh, Bluetooth, can you just push the media button on the steering wheel and say Bluetooth audio play? 
Yes, David, you can. Thank you so much for putting that comment on my five things I hate about my Boss 302 video. I'll link that one in the description below. But that was one of my biggest grievances with the car is the fact that I always have to go menu, source, select, go down and change it. Really frustrating. As soon as I read that comment, I went outside and actually tried it, David, and it worked. Thank you so much for that comment. I really appreciate it and I use it every day. All right, uh, Sunny asks, what springs are you running? So Sunny's referring to the lowering springs that are on my Boss 302. So I'm actually using the Ford Racing T springs. For me, I love the way they look. They lower it just enough and they allow you to still get over speed bumps, which is huge. I'm daily driving the car, as you guys know. And if I'm scraping all the time, that's gonna get really annoying really quick. So the T springs for me, they work great. The drivability on them is really nice. They're not too harsh. They're just a little bit firmer than the stock springs. So I'm super happy with those. Thanks for asking Sonny. All right, another great question here. Uh, so David asked, hey Sean, uh, from Seattle here, can you recommend a good tuning shop in BC? Yes, I can. As you guys know, in my last video, we finally tuned the Boss 302 with the track key, and that was done at Mopac Auto Supplies in Langley, British Columbia. Uh, Nick in the shop there worked closely with me to make sure that we could get this tune done. It turned out awesome, cars driving great. Uh, Nick really did the extra, went the extra mile, I would say, to uh, find out all the extra details that we needed to know to make sure if this was gonna be possible. He did a lot of this on his own time, so I was really appreciative of that, and the car's running great, so I would highly recommend those guys if you're looking to get this tune done and you're somewhere in this area, so for sure. All right, here's another great one, guys. Uh, so Kyle says, hey, have you ever thought about putting tires on the car and seeing how much faster the ETs would be, or how much farther the ETs would drop? Yes, I did, Kyle. We actually did that one video on the truth about bias ply drag radials, and, or drag tires, sorry, and how much, uh, you know, getting rid of that sway that everyone's so scared of with those tires. Well, putting those tires on that car dropped the ETs immediately. I pretty much shaved a full second off from what I was doing. Now, the big disclosure in that is, I'm still learning the car and I'm still learning even how to drag race. It's not a thing that I do constantly. I don't have a lot of seat time uh, doing drag racing and launching the car correctly. And I am still dealing with this really bad transmission. So uh, just putting those tires on gave me a lot more confidence. The car hooked up great. There was no wheel hop or chatter and the car went perfectly straight down the track with no sway. So I think those tires made a huge difference. And my goal, once this transmission has been rebuilt and I do the 500 miles to break the clutch my goal is really to get this thing down into the very low 11 second runs. So let's see if we can get that done before the season's over. End of September, early October, there's a few runs around that time. The weather's usually perfect, nice and cool. And that's when your car is going to make the most amount of power. So I'm going to go for it by the end of this year here. And hopefully we can pull that off. So stay tuned for that video, guys. It will come soon. All right. So Dylan asked another great question here. Are you planning on doing any mods in the future? Yes, I am, Dylan. That is exactly what was uh, so exciting about finally being able to get this car tuned with the Tracky. Uh, there's so many great parts out for these cars, and you know I wanted to take advantage of those things. Long tube headers, possibly the Cobra Jet uh, intake manifold, and even the Cobra Jet cams, but they all require a tune, and I didn't want to lose the Tracky. Now that we have this tune done successfully, we can go ahead with these modifications on the car. So look forward for that. Probably, I'm going to say, maybe over the winter, but I still want to be daily driving the car during the winter, so we might kind of do it in the spring, right before the season picks up again, and uh, we'll see what the car could do. All right, guys, I'm going to end it with this one. This one actually came in on the Instagram. I put a picture up on Instagram, and I asked uh, everyone out there in the community, hey, guys, I'm going to do this video. Do you have any questions uh, that you'd like me to answer in the video? And so I really appreciate this last one, so we're going to leave it on this one because I think it's a great one. All right, so uh, Calmy asks, uh, let's see here. My question is justifiable to drive a car of such limited production every day due to work. I drive maybe a thousand miles a month. That is an amazing question. And that's actually the premise of this whole, uh, YouTube channel. Would I drive this car every day and put those miles on it? For me and my personal choice, it was an absolute yes. The reason being is I've had other limited production Mustangs in the past and I've been so scared to drive them because I didn't want to put those miles on the car for fear of what I would devalue the car and what the next person was going to think. And it made me miss out on a lot of great opportunities, a lot of great trips that I could have partaken in, a lot of things that I just, I was too scared to put the miles on the car. I was too scared to do any modifications to the car for fear of what the next guy might think. So with this car, I promised myself I wasn't going to do that. 
I love the car. It's one of the cars I've always wanted to own in the Mustang kind of lineage, and I'm just gonna go for it. That's my personal opinion and my personal take. You have to kind of look at what are your goals with the car and what do you want to do? If you bought this car, you know, because you're speculating it might go up in value, or you bought a car that maybe needs some work and you want to put the work into it and then turn around and sell it, then I would say, yeah, be mindful of the mileage. Get the car cleaned up, get it in good shape, maintain it very well, keep good records, and you will do well in these cars. I've never lost money on any limited production Mustangs that I've owned and sold, but that's always because I've always had the premise that I would sell the car in a short period of time. So for me, this time around, I'm disregarding all that. I'm just going to enjoy the car, I'm gonna love it, I'm gonna put the miles on it, and if I can, I don't think I'm gonna sell it. I think I'm just gonna buy another one, another car that I enjoy, probably a truck or something, but I, well, I do have a truck already, but I'll buy another one. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of my premise of what I wanna do with the car. So yeah, thanks again, guys, for all these questions. I enjoyed every single one of them. It was so hard for me to pick the ones to do on this video here. We'll try and do some more of these Q&A videos in the future. And if you guys like this video, please hit the like button. If you wanna subscribe, please subscribe. I'll be trying to put out another video coming up shortly. We did do the GVMA show on the last weekend. I just gotta edit it and put it together. So until next time, guys, thanks so much for watching.